Hi folks, this is uh, Jason. Um, I'm officially off YouTube, but I'll I'll be making these videos and then putting them on private and won't be releasing them uh, for a few months. So if anybody does see these before the prior time, these are not for public consumption until a later date. It's good to be with you and I'm going to pray and ask the Lord's blessing. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and we thank you for your grace and we give you the praise and we give you the glory and we give you the honour and we thank you for this day and we pray for your blessings, Lord, in your name. Amen. Okay, we're going to be looking at a number of scholarly issues and the first thing that we're going to be looking at uh, concerning the four Gospels is the historical literary evidence of the authorship of the four Gospels. Um, so we're going to be thinking about how do we know that the four Gospels were written by the people that we believe them to have been written by? What evidence is there to trace back the authorship? Now it's important to bear in mind that if we can't answer this question it will lead to considerable amount of problems. If we can't trace back the four Gospels back to uh, the original authors it's going to be a pretty devastating blow against Christianity because the Gospels are the main source about who Jesus is. But if we can prove the authorship of the Gospels, it gives the Gospels a certain amount of authority showing that these documents are written by the people who wrote them um, and that the material that they've written is concerning what they see as important by the eyewitness accounts. So it's very important also that we get a lot of Muslim scholars, Muslims and also uh, agnostic scholars and atheists who will attack uh, the four Gospels and one of the areas is to try and say that there were these conspiracies in the early church to suppress other Gospels etc. So if we can give strong historical evidence for the uh, authorship of the Gospels, then that pretty much destroys the critics' arguments concerning conspiracy theories. So first of all, what evidence do we have? Well, Origen, um, an early church father from 25 AD, writes this. Concerning the four Gospels, which alone are uncontroverted in the Church of God under heaven, I have learned by tradition that the Gospel according to Matthew, who was at one time a publican, I have learned by tradition that the Gospel according to Matthew, who was at one time a publican and afterwards an apostle of Jesus Christ, was written first and that he composed it in the Hebrew tongue and published it for the converts from Judaism. The second written was that according to Mark, who wrote it according to the instruction of Peter, who in his general epistle acknowledged him as a son, saying, The church that is in Babylon, I like to get to, together with you, salute you, and so does Mark, my son. And third was that according to Luke, the gospel composed by Paul, which he composed of for the converts from the Gentiles, most of all that according to John. This uh, quotation is in uh, Origins commentary on Matthew. Now this is a very significant piece of historical information from an early church father that there was no controversy concerning who wrote those Gospels. Now if you know anything about uh, history and how to verify ancient documents you will know that this is uh, strong evidence. Those who don't know that you need to know that this is because you, you you're getting uh, a very clear statement uh, from a very eminent thinker 
who's not going to be lying, who's not going to be twisting things, and it's significant information, but it gets even better. Tertullian, who was perhaps, if not one of the greatest theologians in the history of the church, uh, in 207 AD, in his book Against Marcion, uh, chapter 4, verse 5, says this, The same authority of the apostolic churches will afford evidence to the other gospels also, which we possess equally through their means, and according to their usage, I mean the gospels of John and Matthew, whilst that which Mark published may be affirmed to be Peter's, whose interpreter Mark was. But even Luke's form of the gospel, men usually ascribe to Paul, and it may well seem that the works which disciples publish belong to their masters. That's very clear evidence of who the authors of the four Gospels are. Tertullian 207 AD says, we lay it down as our first position that the Evangelical Testament as apostles for its authors, to whom was assigned by the Lord and Himself his office of publishing the gospel of the apostles. Therefore, John and, and Matthew first instilled faith into us while as apostolic men, Luke and Mark, renew it afterwards. These all start with the same principles of faith, so far as relates to the one and only God, the creator of his Christ, how that he was born of the Virgin and can, came to fulfill the law and the prophets. Against Marcion 4.2. By 180 AD, we have Irenaeus says, an early church father says, Matthias also issued a written gospel among the Hebrews in their own dialect, while Peter and Paul were preaching at Rome and laying the foundations of the church. After the departure, Mark, the disciple and interpreter of Peter, did also hand down to us in writing what had been preached by Peter. Luke also the companion. In a Paul recorded about the gospel preached by him. Afterwards, John, the disciple of the Lord, who also had leaned.